Well, good afternoon uh, and good morning, everybody who's been joining us so far. We're, we're about to begin our webinar here today. This is Kevin Ortner, CEO of Renters Warehouse. We also have uh, Ryan McBride, the uh, COO for Colony American Finance. We're really excited to have you all here and look forward to getting started in just a few minutes. We're going to let a few more people join in before we get started. And um, Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, Kevin. Thanks for having me. And uh, again, just uh, maybe one or two more minutes as we are watching uh, people log in now and, and join the webinar, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, well, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started, be respectful of everybody's time. Thanks again for joining us. This is Kevin Ortner with Renters Warehouse, joined by Ryan McBride with Colony American Finance. And today I wanna to talk to everybody about growing your rental business, uh, whether, whether it's your own personal rental portfolio or for any uh, real estate agents uh, in the, uh, on the call today and on the webinar, talk about how you can speak with your clients about their options for growing their rental business and thus drive and improve your business. So today's agenda, we're going to talk first about what's rent to state uh, What do we define rent to state as? What's the renter nation? The change in demographics in the across the country today. What today's single family rental market looks like. Rent to state resources, guides, handbooks, calculations, and ways that you can continue to analyze your investment. Talk to your clients about how they can purchase more long term investment real estate. And then finally, we want to wrap it up with uh, financing rent to state and ways that you can finance your portfolio, refinance your portfolio, and frankly, leverage, leverage your cash to go further and um, buy more properties ultimately. So really excited for the agenda today. And uh, let's just dive right in. <clears throat> so again, Renters Warehouse, really quick overview. We're a national residential property management company really focused on the SFR space. We're 95% single family homes. The other 5% is small multifamily, one to four units mostly. A lot of condos, duplexes, uh, fourplex, et cetera. We're excited as we continue our expansion across the country with a corporate owned uh, model. We're able to offer a lot of centralized services and service large portfolio investors in multiple regions or smaller uh, property owners, those who own one or two doors in many, many markets across the country. Uh, proud to be a seven-time Inc. 500 5,000 award winner since 2010 and uh, continue to grow the pedigree of residential property management across the country. <clears throat> Again, we're, we're 35 markets across 18 states. So as you're joining today, uh, even if you live in uh, New York or, or Maine or Oregon, places where maybe there's not as good as single families, SFR, property values, and ways for you to leverage your money and make money in the SFR space, know where Renters Warehouse is between Renters Warehouse and Colony American Finance, uh, really you can own properties anywhere across the country and, uh, and find some great returns <clears throat> in what you're doing. Renters Warehouse, we look, like to look at ourselves as a 360 degree uh, property management solution. Everything from tenant placement to 24 seven property management, including all of your accounting, property repairs and maintenance, uh, leasing services, uh, inspections of your property, Anything and everything has to do with property management. It's all done. We're a flat fee model, something very unique to the market. And uh, again, look forward to hopefully working with many of you guys here on the call and on the webinar today. I know we have a lot of clients joining us as well, so thank you for that. And really excited to announce our portfolio services division uh, for large institutional and portfolio owners. This, this uh, division is new to our business and it's something we're focusing on those who own 50 to 5,000 doors. And again, with our Way we're expanding our business and servicing many reaches of the nation. Uh, we're able to, to manage people's assets in more than one region across multiple markets through this portfolio services division and really an exciting piece of, of where we are in our business. If you have any questions about that, check it out on our website, runnerswarehouse.com. Feel free to follow up after the webinar with us and uh, we'll certainly send you more information about how we're, how we're changing the game for large portfolio investors. 
And then the last plug for Renters Warehouse really is, is really talking about Renters Warehouse by the numbers, what's happening to us across the country from our fast tenant placement time of 11 to 17 days on average, depending on the market and the region, fantastic rent collection and delinquency rates, low eviction rate and low vacancy rates. Uh, we have a professional team of dedicated resources and staff across the country to service any of your property management and leasing needs. And with that infomercial over, let's jo jump right into the meat of today's presentation. So what is rent to state? We look at rent to state as really real estate for the rest of us. For years, many, many people thought owning SFR, single family rentals, uh, by many, by more than five, by 10, by 15, was the only way to really be in this business, was the only way to get scale, was the only way that you could really leverage this type of asset. Many Americans hadn't thought about owning long-term real estate as part of their financial portfolio. And at Renters Warehouse, we think that that mindset needs, mindset needs to shift a bit and are, are continuing to grow our presence across the country to make it fast, easy, and worry-free to own long-term investment real estate what we call rent to state to build long-term wealth, create legacy uh, for your family, take advantage of the tax advantages, the ways to leverage other people's money, which Colony American is going to talk to us about later today. And so frankly, we exist to help homeowners, investors create wealth and financial freedom through rent to state. And now couldn't be a better time to be in it because we're in what I'm calling the renter nation. And so what's the renter nation? Really the renter nation is, the fact that across the country today, no matter what market or state you live in, we're seeing more and more people choose to rent. More and more people choose to rent homes rather than buy them. They're pushing off buying homes till later in life. And so with that being said, it creates great opportunity for accidental investors, those who maybe never thought they were gonna get into owning rental properties as part of their portfolio. People who are move-up buyers, they're maybe moving out of their starter home into something larger and want to keep their home and rent it rather than sell it. And then, of course, intentional investors and those who are making conscious decisions early on on how they're going to create wealth for themselves, how they're going to leverage their finances and build a rental portfolio. And both of these types of clients are people we serve here at Rangers Warehouse as well as our partners at Colony American Finance work closely with, with all all these groups across the spectrum. So if we look at today's renter nation, we just really look at the numbers, the fact that renters and renter households have increased by over 2 million in 2015, while the number of homeowners has decreased by almost 400,000. We can talk about the fact that home ownership rates across America have hit a 50 year low, a 50 year low, it's unbelievable. In fact, the last a census report I saw maybe three, four months ago showed it's now a 52 year low, which really creates interesting dynamics across the market because we're seeing home ownership rates at an all time low, or not all time, but 50 year low. But we're in many parts of the country, we're in a fantastic real estate market. Housing prices are appreciating, there's multiple offers. It's, it's clearly known in most markets that it's a seller's market. There's still, there's still markets recovering from our real estate downturn, but it's odd, the numbers don't really match. And what this is pointing to is the fact that investors are the ones that are buying homes. Uh, not necessarily those going in to move into them to live as their home, but more investors are coming in and buying more and more of the SFR stock for uh, the purposes of investing rather than, than living in themselves. And it's really a, a great time to do that for two reasons. One, this year, mortgage rates are still at really, really record low rates. This morning I was listening to uh, the news radio on my way and heard 30-year uh, fixed rates at 3.24%, at least here in Minneapolis where I'm based out of. Fantastic rate. Great time for investors to be looking at getting into the market on a conventional standpoint. And there's lots and lots of other products out there that aren't conventional, that are through private lenders like Colony American Finance that allow you to get into more than one property, but leverage your, your funds across multiple properties and uh, really excited to dive into that later. But what's gonna happen next year in, in later 2016 or into 2017 or beyond, I guess, but if interest rates do continue to rise or do start to rise, like many are predicting, it's gonna make it harder and harder for everyday Americans to purchase a home to live in. So more and more are gonna continue to look at that renting stage. 
at the same time as as we're seeing great financing opportunities available for property investors and potential struggles for those looking to get into their first time home, rents are on the increase as well across the country. And this graph here on the screen now shows rents as a percentage of median income, again, on the rise, making uh, your real estate investments and long-term rent estate investments create better and better returns uh, for you or your investors that you work with. This also on the flip side, again, continues to make it harder and harder for tenants that are currently renting to save to buy a home. And the more, of their, the more percentage of their income they're spending on their monthly rent, obviously the less they can set aside. And so it creates this cycle that we're finding ourselves in where more and more people have a harder time to qualify, even though those great rates are there for them. But frankly, in many markets, it's still cheaper to rent than buy, especially up and down the West Coast and in certain places on the uh, eastern seaboard, there's, there's many, many markets where renting is just simply a better option for those who don't want to buy. So what does that all mean? It means that it's a perfect storm for sustained growth in the single family home rental space, the SFR space, with the fact that increased credit standards for people to get mortgages to purchase a home, home prices are on the rise, there's more rental stock out there to choose from, and frankly, there's just a mindset among the millennials coming out of college or moving from their first career to their second career or their second job that they're just not quite ready to buy. Many folks want to live in one city today and maybe another next year, not ready to be tied down. And frankly, some of that, those same people that are in their early 30s watched their family's net worth and entire savings evaporate overnight in the last housing downturn, real estate crisis and just don't believe in real estate the same way that, that many other people do. And so that desire has changed, the American dream has changed from what people want to, to do. People want to be more mobile, they're used to this micro economy of Uber and Airbnb and all these different options that exist. And so there's just a psychological change as well as many, many macroeconomic factors that are driving more people to rent, but creating a fantastic environment for those looking to get into the SFR rental state, uh, area and grow a rental portfolio. So let's talk about what that is. What is today's SFR, single family rental market, look like? What's the potential of the market? What does it really represent? What does all this mean? It wasn't long ago that this wasn't even a category or, or really a true legitimate asset class until large hedge funds and institutions came in and really started buying in bulk. <clears throat> what, we, what you see is single family rentals, SFRs, account for almost 16 million uh, properties of the total rental stock. There's about 43 million rental units across the country, depending on which report you look at it, 16 million of those are in the SFR space, or 37% of the entire rental housing stock, which is interesting. And many people I talked to today mentioned that, you know, that's all fine and good, but so many of those now are owned by large institutions. Uh, Calling American Homes, Invitation Homes, Blackstone, American Homes for Rent, large funds that are buying these properties. And, and they're certainly continuing to build their portfolio. And over the last eight years have built a really large portfolio, but it really accounts for 1% or less of all the SFR stock out there. The SFR stock, single family rentals are driven by mom and pop investors, those who own one to maybe four properties, one to four doors. And you can see that that rental stock, single family rental stock has increased dramatically since the lows in 2007 to what uh, we project here, 2015 and beyond. Interesting graph here shows the market size. And again, this shows that small investors dominate the SFR market with 81% of the properties uh, or owners own between one and five properties. Again, so much focus on the space, on the SFR space, and on the institutional side, those who own a thousand or more properties. Those own 500 or more properties. And you can see 500 plus doors is less than 1% of this market space. And so lots of opportunities for those who want to purchase single family rentals to be able to get into the game. You don't have to be a large investor to do it. There's a lot of tools out there to allow you to creatively find your way of getting into these properties and lots and lots of opportunity to build long-term wealth. <clears throat> Our next slide just highlights again the top 17 institutional owners 
192,000 homes or 1.2% of those 16 million SFR we talked about earlier. So as we go through and talk about rent to state, as we talk about the market opportunity, how the heck do you get into it? How do you analyze a property? What are we looking for? Where are we going to go? We're going to jump into a, a bunch of resources and guides and ways to, that you can kind of navigate yourself through this or navigate your clients through this if you're a real estate agent. Uh, and you can see these by visiting renterswarehouse.com under Why Rent Your Home. We have a variety of guidebooks from our insider's guide to rent estate, a rent or sale handbook. This is a really unique tool we've created that really weighs the options between selling your home today or renting your home today and keeping it for the long term and creating long term wealth. What does that picture look like for people? Uh, tax advantages discussion. There's numerous tax advantages that come into this as well as um, tips to talk to people about keeping or, or selling their property today. <clears throat> ways to analyze your return and analyze your, your properties. There's really three ways. We're not going to dive into the details on this today. We actually have a, a past webinar posted on our website where we really dive into these calculations on how to analyze the returns on your investment. And Colony American is going to talk a little bit about some samples of how you should be looking at the returns on your cash. But when you're looking at your property, there's three basic ways to measure your return as an individual or smaller investor. And that's just your basic cash flow model, your cash on cash return, and your cap rate. Cash flow, I believe, is too basic. <clears throat> doesn't take into consideration a lot of the external factors that we should be looking at when we're determining how our money is working for us or how our real estate is working for us. And so it's not quite the right measure. Cash on cash return, I think, for the SFR space, for a small owner who owns fewer than 20 homes, is really a great way to analyze how your portfolio, how your single property is performing. And that's because you can actually measure how much money you're putting into the property versus and what your return is on that. And again, that's going to be an example. If you put $100,000 into a property and you make $10,000 a year, you're making a 10% return on your cash. If you can use find ways to leverage your cash and put less money into a property but make a higher return on that cash, that's a good thing. And, and again, later, later today, uh, we're going to have Ryan speak a little bit to that. And cap rate's the third way, but that's really for uh, multifamily properties and a way to value those as we're going through. And, and again, if you want detailed looks or step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform these these calculations, whether it's the cash flow method, the cash on cash return, or, or analyzing the cap rate of your property, check out one of our past webinars. We've really dived into the detail on that and discussed that at length. Another tool we have at renterswarehouse.com is our rent for sale calculator. This started out years ago as a, as a take home handbook pamphlet where it's an exercise you can work and we've, we've made it live and animated on our website. You can go there and put in things like your home value, the price you paid, your anticipated rent. You can click there for a rental analysis from one of our team members to let you know how much you could rent your home for if you're not sure. Plug it in and it's going to tell you if you sell today, here's your the wealth you've created. If you hold on for five years and sell, here's what that looks like for you. Some fantastic graphs, charts at the very bottom. You can click in and put in some more detailed information around um, more kind of micro numbers on your property from maintenance and repair costs to your tax rates and insurance expenses, turn costs, all that kind of stuff. So you can get really granular with it or you can get a nice high level view on this rent first all calculator as well. So we're really excited to have rolled that out, checked it out on the website. You know, and today we've, we've talked a lot about what the environment is uh, in the SFR market how it's an opportunity that I think everyone should be seizing on today to go buy properties, put them in the rental pool, and look, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. This isn't something, this isn't a flipping TV show, which, by the way, aren't real. Uh, this is something that is slow and steady wins the race. This is a long-term plan. This is a retirement plan. This is a wealth creation tool. Buy one today. Buy another one next year. Get creative with how you finance them. Get great partners. Build a great team. And ultimately, you have a nice portfolio of rental properties. So today we've partnered with our friends at Colony American Finance, uh, and 
again, Ryan's going to jo uh, join in here in just a moment and talk about financing options to get into this space, whether you own one property, whether you own 10 properties, whether you own 100 properties, or you don't own any and you're looking to get in for the first time. Fantastic advice coming shortly from Ryan. But with that said, we've uh, created a great partnership. Uh, if you're a Renters Wealth client today and you talk to Colony American Finance about uh, refinancing your existing property or purchasing more, you're going to get a $250 uh, closing credit. A great deal. We thank Colony American for, for sending that off for uh, our way for our clients and then those who, who use Colony American Finance. And on the uh, flip side of that equation, if you're a Colony American Finance client looking for property management uh, for any of your rent to state that you own across the country and you call Renters Wealth and sign up with us, we're going to give you three months of property management for free. Our way of uh, saying thank you for your business as well as thanks for being a client of a great partners of our, partner of ours. So with that being said, I'd love to uh, introduce Ryan to you. Ryan McBride is the uh, Chief Operations Officer at Colony American Finance. And uh, we're really happy to have him on the webinar today and partner with him today. And, uh, and Ryan, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Kevin. Much appreciated. Um, we're big believers in Renter Nation, uh, so much so that we created a finance company around the market. Um, that's what we do, we cater to uh, folks that own residential properties uh, for rentals. Uh, we've been around for about two years, two and a half years. We've just announced uh, over two billion in loan closings. Uh, we're in 48, sorry, 41 states. And we have about 15,000 properties that we've financed for over 1,500 borrowers. So we are big believers in the growth of the market. And we think that we have the products that can help uh, the folks on the phone grow their portfolios, and actually return more capital either to themselves uh, or to their uh, investors, uh, and then also uh, finance uh, properties so they can grow their portfolios uh, in a more rapid fashion. Uh, I'm going to speak briefly here about the financing market. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of the products that we and others offer, and then I'll provide uh, an example here in terms of how leverage, how loans can help uh, you grow your portfolio and not only grow your portfolio faster, but then also increase your returns. So if we look at the sources for investor financing, there are a variety of ways which I'm sure many of you recognize uh, on the slide uh, for you to increase the size of your portfolio uh, and to buy rental properties. Uh, obviously, you know, we're a private lender, um, so we took the top billing here at the uh, slide, but uh, we're focused on serving this market. Uh, sometimes you may see other lenders out there, hard money lenders, uh, which tend to have higher rates. Uh, groups like us, Colony American Finance, were expressly created to serve the rental market here, and as a result, we're able to offer lower rates, uh, much faster closing times, because again, this is all that we do. Uh, many of you may have looked at friends and family. Uh, it's certainly a good way to finance uh, properties uh, by partnering with those that you know, although you can imagine sometimes that may create issues. You certainly don't want to be late on your rent check to your mom. Not a good thing to do. Uh, local banks are another potential opportunity, but this tends to be pretty limited because uh, usually banks don't quite know how to finance rental properties that efficiently. And so if you're going to get a loan from a local bank, you typically have to have a really good relationship there, and they tend not to be able to scale that loan for you beyond a few properties. Uh, there's marketplace lenders that are out there. They tend to be more focused on uh, the fix and flip market. Uh, the other thing, too, with uh, marketplace lenders is the programs tend to change from time to time. So you may have a very good deal one day, but uh, they may decide to go in a different direction. So you might not have that same opportunity uh, to get the same loan down the road. Uh, savings and cash, that's certainly you know, the good old-fashioned way. Um, the only issue about using cash is um, you're really capped out in terms of your purchases and your returns based on the equity that you're putting out. Um, you have a very limited amount to grow your portfolio. We like to look at savings and cash uh, through the equity mean, which gives you the opportunity to uh, put in a decent down payment on a number of different homes and really multiply uh, your savings and grow your portfolio by purchasing more homes. The next slide just shows you again, I think that we are focused on renter nation. We 
have you know very specific uh, products here that are designed to assist people in acquiring rental homes and then financing them over the long term. We don't do boat loans, we don't do mobile home loans, uh, no conventional mortgages. This is really focused again on renter nation. So we have credit lines that help people acquire assets and then once those assets have been in many cases rehabbed and we have a renter in them, then we have a loan for individual assets and then we have a variety of loans for portfolios of rental properties. The next page gives you a little bit more color on the products that we offer. Um, and I think you can see just going down the list that um, it's possible to finance a range of different property types from single family rentals to townhomes to multi-unit uh, buildings, condos, two to fours and the like. Uh, all make outstanding rental properties. And as Kevin talked about before, uh, there are millions of units um, across the U.S. that fall into these categories and thousands of renters. So we're really focused on working with uh, renters that may own a single asset, that may own you know, upwards of 500 plus assets. We have the products that allow you to do that. For our term loans, um, whether it's a single asset or our rental portfolio loans, you can finance up to 75% of the value. And depending on the loan type, that can be a traditional 30-year type of loan, or it can be a five-year term loan uh, that, secured, that is securitized by a portfolio of rental properties. Um, in terms of values, again, there's a lot of flexibility here, too. Uh, for as little as $75,000, um, you can finance a single property. Or if you have multiple uh, properties, we can go up to 100 million. Um, what I think I'm most proud of about our company, and I think that uh, should be attractive to the folks on the phone here, is really the last line here, and that's the closing times. I think now that this market has really started to evolve, um, not only in services uh, offered up uh, by Renters Warehouse, but also on the financing side, we're now able to close loans uh, in a pretty rapid time frame. So a credit line, for instance, we can evaluate a borrower and provide a commitment you know, within two to four weeks. And then I think for the term loans, uh, we could be anywhere from three to six weeks to secure a portfolio loan or a single asset rental loan. I'm going to move forward into a concrete example just to give you a better idea for how loans can affect your business directly. Um, but before I do so, just you know, to recap some of the benefits of getting a loan. It's an opportunity for you to expand that piggy bank that we showed in the prior slide. It's going to allow you to unlock your equity and allow you to purchase more homes. Um, as Kevin mentioned about earlier, leverage can certainly increase your profits, whether it's a cash on cash return or just pure dollars in your pocket. And by doing so, it allows you to uh, build your portfolio faster. And I know many folks are now looking at this as a business, and we feel like we are supporting those businesses by allowing you to grow your portfolio, generate more cash flow, and expand your real estate footprint. So let's look at a simple example. Um, and, and it's basically using a credit line to increase your purchase power. Uh, so you can have for instance, $100,000 to invest, and if you do it purely in cash, uh, you can buy one $100,000 home. Assuming a pretty modest, straightforward 75 loan to value credit line, um, it will allow you to buy four homes uh, in this basic example. So you have your same $100,000 in cash, uh, but now you have a loan for $300,000. So the $400,000 will allow you to buy those four homes. To show how this affects your bottom line and how it ref re reflects your economics, uh, we then contrast what the one home would do for you versus the four homes. And on the left, a single rental home, we're assuming, will bring a net rental income uh, to the owner of about $833 per month. Uh, we're assuming this is about a 10% net return to uh, the owner. So in a given year, that's about $10,000. In the prior example where we purchased the four homes, um, we see the net rental income for the four homes uh, now becomes over $1,800 per month after debt service. This assumes about a 6% interest rate uh, in a five-year loan. And what that translates into is about $22,000 
of cash generated by this portfolio and a 22% return. So more than two times the income in your pocket and then more than two times the return if you're looking at cash on cash return. Importantly as well is if you are a long-term holder and you're a believer in appreciation in your market, you have the opportunity to experience that appreciation not just on one property but on four properties. So in that case, you're seeing appreciation uh, on the order of four times. So it's a very straightforward example. Obviously, everybody has uh, very specific uh, opportunities that may be a little bit different from you, but I think you get the general idea of how leverage can help grow your portfolio and then also grow your returns. In terms of the next steps, uh, how to obtain financing, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it would be helpful for us and other lenders is certainly once we have your information um, and we have an application, we can get to work on it fairly quickly. Um, we have a very straightforward diligence process and approval process. We've underwritten uh, tens of thousands of homes, and as I mentioned earlier, we're very efficient at closing these. And typically, I think our average loan closes in about four weeks. So it's very straightforward. We're happy to help people in terms of closing their loans and going out and buying more homes. So Kevin, with that, um, I'm finished with my portion of the conversation. I don't know if we want to open it up for any questions. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ryan, for that information. Fantastic information for Renters Warehouse clients, I know. And uh, I look forward to having some follow-up conversations with folks. And, and with that, uh, if there's questions uh, from those on the webinar today, feel free on the right-hand side of your screen, there's a chat box. We're accepting those chat questions, and Ryan and I will field those that um, that come through. So we'll give it a minute or so as, as anyone's writing questions, and then we'll we'll cover those questions. All right, we're, we're having a couple questions come in. Ryan, there's actually a question on financing that just popped through from Julia, and uh, it's what are the what are the average costs or standard costs associated with uh, getting a loan or financing rental properties? Uh, great question. Um, typically, uh, there is costs uh, for much like any other loan, cost for an appraisal. Uh, there's a very modest um, processing fee um, for the originations uh, of the loan. Uh, but generally speaking, um, you know, beyond a 1% origination fee and uh, probably about, um, you know, anywhere from, you know, 500 to uh, a couple thousand dollars, just depending on the size of the loan, that tends to be the uh, cost associated with uh, with a loan, which is, you know, again, it will vary based on the portfolio size um, and then the complexity, uh, but a very straightforward individual loan uh, should be, you know, fairly de minimis and in line with what you would expect with uh, a normal uh, mortgage from a conventional lender. Thanks, Ryan. Would you say that, you know, 2%, 3% is on average maybe the total cost? Yeah, I would say it's probably around 2% when you factor in the origination fee and then um, some of the other costs just to process that line. So I think 2% makes sense. I think when you look at larger loans just on a percentage of the you know, overall loan, that number will go down just because you know, the, some of those uh, costs don't scale with the loan size. But yeah, I think 2% is a pretty good uh, approximation. Great, thanks. You know, you're a popular guy. We have another question in here um, from Mark. And Mark's asking you if you guys look at purchases differently than refinances, or if you do refinances of portfolios or properties, uh, how do you guys do that? Uh, you know, we, we certainly handle both, um, and we, you know, sometimes will um, examine a 
um, a, a refinance uh, in, in the sense of it's been a very quick turnaround from a purchase to the refinance. Say, say somebody bought it with a credit line or bought it on their loan and they, uh, on another loan or out of cash and they want to refinance it. We want to make sure that there is a you know a, a moderate seasoning period, typically three or six months, depending on um, you know where the property is located in the individual situation. But by and large, I think the you know the rates, the conditions, the terms uh, essentially mirror each other um, from you know both a purchase and a refinance transaction. Great, thank you for that. Appreciate everyone's questions. It looks like that um, that may do it for us. So Ryan, I appreciate you fielding uh, all of the questions here this afternoon, and for co-hosting this webinar with us. And thanks to uh, again, thanks for to Ryan and Colony American Finance. Thanks for everybody for joining in. You can get a recording of this webinar. Uh, it'll be on our website as well as you'll get an email. If you had signed up, you'll get this in an email. Um, and uh, always be checking back for future webinars. And thanks again, Ryan, for joining us today. Thank you, Kevin, for hosting. Appreciate it. We'd love to do it again.